awaits you at the top of the world, my children. Last year, we looked at a manga adapting the first half of H.P. Lovecraft's tale of an Antarctic expedition. So, let's finish that off and see what they discovered, eh? When we last left the expedition from Miskatonic University, one team of scientists led by Professor Lake had discovered the remains of some strange creatures with star-shaped heads along with reflections in tall black mountains that seemed to indicate an alien city of some kind. When the rescue party led by Professor Dyer and a student named Danforth went on a rescue party of Lake's team, they discovered Lake's camp destroyed, the people dead, and hung up like in a slaughterhouse. On some of the star-headed corpses were missing. Also missing were a man named Gedney and one of the dogs. So Dyer and Danforth pressed on to find out what had happened with Gedney, whom they suspect murdered everyone. We pick up with the team heading into the tall, tall mountains, and indeed discovering the alien city in all its frozen, inexplicable detail. They put aside the search for Gedney to do some exploration. Nothing too major is found at first, but venturing deeper in, they discover evidence that Gedney has been here, and that the former inhabitants of the city were not human. There's also concern that some of the inhuman screeching that they're hearing could mean that the city is not as deserted as they believed, but soon they realize that they do recognize the sound. Penguins! Hey, let's not take anything for granted. If some Lovecraftian monsters still resemble animals, then we could still have giant monster penguins that will peck our souls out. Inside the labyrinth of a dark tower, they discover bodies of the star-headed creatures, still partially preserved from the cold, as well as the history of this place, combined with their own knowledge from the Necronomicon. The star-headed beings were the Great Old Ones, aliens that had come to the nascent, lifeless Earth out of cosmic space. This vanished epoch of Earth's history tells of them spreading over the world to take it and make it their own. Using forms of energy unimaginable, they created cities and life, particularly a protoplasmic life form to do a variety of tasks and duties for them. These were the Shoggoths, the loyal servants of the Great Old Ones. While the Great Old Ones began in the sea, they soon adapted to living on the ground. For a time. The Earth was still young after all, and the various cataclysms and natural disasters forced them back into the sea. But while they were the masters of Earth, they were not unchallenged. The spawn of Cthulhu came to Earth with designs of their own, waging monstrous war against the Great Old Ones. Eventually, the Earth once again swallowed up an alien life. The spawn of Cthulhu and their city of Relaye sent into the depths of the ocean, while the Great Old Ones ascended, building their cities again at ever taller heights. But then the Shoggoths, controlled by the Great Old Ones by hypnosis, began to develop self-awareness and rebelled against their creators. While the Shoggoth Rebellion was put down, another invasion from space, this time from beings known as the Migo, finally drove the Great Old Ones to Antarctica and this final city of theirs. The changing temperature of Earth, particularly how cold the continent became, was the final end for the Great Old Ones, and this place was now their tomb. While still on the trail of Gedney, they discover both his body and that of the missing dog. And they have been dissected and then put back together. Quite cleanly, in fact. Something is still alive here. Deeper in the labyrinth, they discover the source of the penguin noises. And it is, in fact, giant penguins. I am not joking, my children. The good news is that these are not the horrors responsible for Gedney. They're similar to a lost species of penguin that has been living in the city, blind and albino from living in the dark. Professor Dyer feels compelled to move forward, keep studying even beyond reason. And he discovers the other inhabitants of the labyrinth. The Shoggoths! Yes, they are still alive, and they chase the group out of the catacombs and back to their plane. They take off, Danforth peering back at the city as they flee, and is driven nearly mad by whatever it is he sees back there, though we are not privy to it. Those in the expedition decide to not speak of what they saw, fearful that any further explorations might unleash the Shoggoths out into the world. There are parts of the Earth best forgotten, 
and mankind would sleep better if they were not let out again. And poor Danforth, while he has his moments of lucidity afterwards, now mostly spends his time in a madhouse, repeating the sounds of the Shoggoths. At the Mountains of Madness is a great tale from the late Horror Master, who apparently did repent his wicked, despicable racism before his death. And for the story itself, it is good that they did not unleash such knowledge to the world. Humanity must contend so much with its own monsters already. <laughs>